Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be showing you how to create a basic naming system. So in this, when the player begins the game, it's going to ask the player to input a name for their character and then that character will now be associated with anything the player does. And in this example I'm just going to have it in a simple HUD displaying their name on screen next to their health and stamina and it's very easy to put this wherever you want, for example their inventory or anything along those lines. So if I hit play, you can see we have this screen here saying please input your name and in here I'm going to type Matt and then if I hit enter, that's enter the game and you can see in the bottom left it says name, Matt and then health and stamina everything else that you'd have on your HUD. And if I go back out, hit play and instead in the name I type in Jake, hit enter, it now says name Jake. So this works perfectly for what we want, the player can input any word they want for their name and that will then become their name and obviously this can be anything as well so if you want them to name an object for example apple or anything along those lines this will work the same way so this is what we're making today so without further ado let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint to create a variable so i'm going to go to content third person bp blueprints third person character as that's what it is for me but for you this could be third first or whatever you've named it and very simply we're just going to hit the plus variable here naming this one a name or player name, character name, anything along those lines and I'm going to change it from a boolean to a text variable. Compile, save, we don't need to set the default value and we can minimize this but we are going to come back to that blueprint later on so make sure you keep it open. And next we're going to create the widget for the player to input their name into. So I'm just going to go back to my content, I'm going to right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint and I'm just going to name this one name input widget like so. You can name this whatever you like and open it up straight away. In here I'm just going to add a very simple background blur just to make it look a bit better so you can't see the game in the background. Again you can choose whatever you want for this and customize it however you want. So this might even be in your main menu or any other options menu that you have and this might be an image instead. You choose. I'm just going to increase the blur strength to let's say 22 and anchor it to the whole screen. Next I'm going to add some text this part's optional, you don't need to do it. And in here, I'm just going to type, please input your name. Again, you don't need to do that if you don't want to. And I'm going to set the font size to be about 50. Size to content and move this to where I want it to be. So I'll anchor it to the middle and then I will just line this up to be in the middle like so. And then move it down a bit and move that up there. And next, the important part which you do need to have is we want to search in the palette for an editable text, not multi-line, just editable text and put that in here as well. So drag and drop that onto the canvas panel like so. I'm going to select it and move this to where I want it to be as well. I'm going to anchor it to the middle and put it in the center and then just make it about the same size as this. Doesn't matter too much how big you want this to be. You just choose this and set it to be whatever you like. So that's going to be good for me. I'm going to set the font to be about 30. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set some hint text to also be please input your name. As you can see, that is what the player will see there. Please input your name as the hint text. And as soon as they start typing, that will disappear. So that just makes it a little bit easier so the player knows where to put their name and all that good stuff. It's just a nice little detail which you can add on. And when we do get in the game, the text font will auto fix to be the correct size we want. To test it, what you can do is just type in some text there to see how big it's going to be, although that doesn't work either. So we'll just have to wait until we get into the game to see how big the font is going to be. Now we can compile and save that. And that is the basic part done. Oh, and as we compiled, the font then updated. So that's a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is just make this a bit bigger like so. And there we go. So now we compile and it fixes. What I'm also going to do, sorry, one last thing, is set the justification to be in the center like so. And now we have it looking how we want it to look. And so once you've set up the visuals of that, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the graph of this widget and we're going to delete these two nodes but we'll keep event tick like so because what we want to do is we want to be using event tick to check to see if the player presses the enter key or any other keyboard event to close this widget. So after event tick, I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch because we are checking something without going in there. Because also in widgets you can't use keyboard events so we have to do it a different way. So I'm going to right click and get the player controller, like so. Out of the return value I'm going to get is input key down. And the key you can set to be what if you like. For me I'm going to have it as enter. 
We again choose whatever you want, and the return value of that will go into the condition of the branch. Off of true of this, I'm going to hold down O and left click to get to do once, because I obviously only wanted it to do this once. And then after this, I'm going to cast to my character. So completed will be cast to, for me, it is the third person character, but for you, it's going to be third, first, or if you've named it. And the object is obviously going to be get player character, like so. And then as third person character, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out this and set name, which is the variable that we made earlier. So whatever you named it in here, search for that and set it like so. So we're going to set that name to be corresponding to what it should be. And to find out what it should be, we're going to get the editable text up here from the components list, or the variables list, sorry, and drag out of that and get text, editable text. So we're going to see what the player inputted and set that to be the name in the character blueprint there. So now that name variable here is associated with whatever the player inputted. So now those two are the exact same, which is perfect. So now whenever you want to access the player's name, you just cast their character and access it there like so. I'm going to leave a gap here because I'm going to do something else after that. And then I'm going to right click and get the player controller again. So right click, get player controller. And I'm going to set input mode game only. So set input mode game only. After that, I'm also going to come out the player controller again and set show mouse cursor. And I'm going to untick it. So we're hiding the mouse cursor. And then after this, I'm going to remove from parents to take the widget off of our screen like so. So these two will make more sense in a second because when we put this widget on screen, we want to change the input mode and show the mouse cursor. So doing this just resets that back to what it should be. I'm going to move those up as well. And again, we're going to come back to this in a second to do something else afterwards. And so what we're going to do now is put this widget on screen and change the input mode and show mouse cursor and all that good stuff. So we can compile, save this, and then minimize it and go to the level blueprint. So I'm going to hit blueprints, open level blueprint, hold down P and left click to get event begin play. Or if you've already used it, what you can do is just go to it, hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connecting then zero into the code you have now, and then one into the code we're about to make. But essentially what you want to do off of event begin play is create widget, like so, with the class being the name input widget we just made. And obviously you can put this wherever you want. So if you maybe want this in the main menu or when you press another widget off the main menu, anything along those lines, just do it there. And the return value will be add to viewport. And then we're going to right click and get player controller once again. The return value going into a set input mode game and UI. Connecting that after the add to viewport there like so. Player controller is obviously the get player controller, and the in widget to focus is going to be the return value of our create widget. So it's going to focus on this UI widget here, as well as allowing us to use keyboard events, i.e., input mode game. And we're going to untick hide cursor during the capture, come out the get player controller again, and set show mouse cursor, ticking that like so, so we can see the mouse cursor perfectly like that. And this is all we need to do for the beginning to allow us to interact with the UI widget and put it on screen and all that good stuff that we need to do. So we can compile, save, and we can close the level blueprint as again, that is all we need to do in here. So now I'm gonna open my HUD or essentially this is just where I want to display the player's name. So again, you can choose wherever you wanna do this, but just open up where you want to display the player's name, which for me is just their HUD. As you can see, I've got a nice little text box down here with just saying name. So I'm going to select the text box which I want and I'm going to hit binding next to text and create a binding. Then I'm going to right click the return value, promote to variable, and I'm going to name this name. So the return value is going to be the player's name. What I'm also going to do though is just format this text so it says name and then the name like so. So let me just type in the format name colon space open brackets name close brackets. And what I'm going to do is then input the name variable into there, put the result in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to read on screen as name, colon, space, and then this variable name here. So whatever the player inputted as their name. Again, you can choose this wherever you want. And what else we want to do in here is select the name variable, tick instance editable, and tick expose on spawn. So then compile and save that. And what this means it's going to do is essentially Whenever we create this widget for the first time, it's going to ask us what this variable is. 
So we can then input the name variable straight away as soon as we create it, which is just a little bit more efficient than what we could be doing otherwise. So now we need to create this widget and input the player's name in there. So I'm going to close the HUD, go back to my third person character blueprint or wherever you have it for you. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to create player HUD or not create player HUD, sorry. I need to add a custom event and I'm going to name this one create player HUD like so, as that's what I'm doing. You can name this whatever you like. And then what I'm going to do is add an input on here or an input parameter and I'm going to name this one name or player name like so changing this to be a text variable. I'm going to come out of the event and get a create widget like so with the class being my HUD widget there and as you can see we now have the name input there. So we can input the name into this which will set that variable and we can connect that into the player name like so. Return value I'm just going to simply add to viewport like that. Now I'm going to compile, save, close that, go back to my widget and now in this space that we left here I'm going to come out of as third person character again on my cast and I'm going to call that function I just made. So that will be create player HUD like so connecting that in there and the player name I'm going to set to be that. So we could have done it a different way and used this variable in the character blueprint as well uh, but the reason why I've set it here as well is just in case you want to still access this name. So essentially here we're only going to access and set it once but if we have it as a variable inside the character blueprint as well, this means you can then also access it elsewhere easily as well if you wanted to. And then we just connect this up and now this should be working perfectly for us because that is going to set that variable to be the correct name in the widget as well. And again, we have it in the character blueprint if we want easy access to it elsewhere. So I hope that all makes sense. So we're going to compile, save, close that. And now let's hit play to test it out. Please input your name says please input your name there as well. So I'm going to type in Matt and we're going to hit enter and now it says name Matt in the bottom left as well. And then if I do Jake again as another example, it now says Jake. So this does work perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we wanted to do. We've set it up so we can input our own custom name into our game and what it's going to do is then display that wherever we want it to be however you want as well and we can access this to put it anywhere else in the code for example an inventory system a backpack a, a house name your character's name anything you want really and this works perfectly very simple to do and access and build upon as well to get it working perfectly for how you want so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one